That's what we're making today. That's pretty good looking, isn't it? Well, hello. Welcome back to my kitchen. Folks, today we're going to be making some fried okra. Now, hey, I'm, I'm from Texas, so I'm a southern guy. We do fried okra. We love okra, okay? And okra's really good tasting when it's done right. So I've got some beautiful young okra here. We also have some other ingredients I'm going to show you in just a moment. It's not hard to make your own fried okra. Once you've made your own fried okra, you'll wonder why was I buying it frozen. Doesn't make any sense. Folks, this is how to make a beautiful, crispy fried okra. I guarantee you're going to like this recipe. Come over and let me show you the ingredients and we'll get started cutting and making fried okra. Come on. The ingredients for fried okra are very simple, folks. You need okra, all right? These little guys, all right? And I'm using some nice medium-sized okra. When they get big, they get kind of fibrous, all right? So I try to keep that to the smaller size ones when I'm frying. Now, in addition, I also have some milk, eggs. I've got flour twice. I've got some uh, cornmeal here. And back here, we have some salt and black pepper. And that's all there is to it. It's a very simple grouping of ingredients. Let's get into making this wonderful dish. Folks, when I'm getting ready to prep my okra to fry it up, I like to give it a good wash. And this is important. You want the outside of that okra to be wet so that it holds the first coating of batter, which will be flour. After it's got a thin layer of flour on it from that moisture, then we move on to the rest of the batter, which is the crispy part of it. Um, go ahead and cut these up. You want to cut pieces that are about a half inch long. And a lot of folks don't like to use the very end of it where it attaches to the plant. If you want to just remove that, that's fine. Or if you want to fry it up, it is edible. So you can enjoy it either way. Folks, get on with cutting and then we dust it with flour. After you cut up your okra, go ahead and season it. Get that salt and pepper right on the okra. You don't have to mess with seasoning the batter itself. This really works better. Now my okra over here already cut up and seasoned. I'm going to combine both of these into this large bowl right here. And then my eggs, I'm going to beat that together with the milk. The okra starts in the flour first. Okay, so I'll place it in this first, get on to putting it in the wet batter, and then I'll dust it through the dry batter which was combined with cornmeal before frying. It's just that simple. I have my pan right here. It's heating up. Make sure you use a fry thermometer. You're looking for a temperature of 325 degrees. Now I've gone ahead and battered up my okra and that means I first put it in the flour, basic flour mixture, and then I put it down into the liquid batter which was the uh, egg and milk mixture and then dropped it into the corn and flour and it's been dusted with that. This is ready to be fried. Okay, just that simple. Very easy to do. And if you'll notice that's a wonderful coating of batter that's on there. It's just right, not too thick or thin. And it will make this wonderful crunchy crust on the outside of that okra that'll be truly memorable. It's really worth your time. Okay, easy. So. Another thing I want to mention, make sure you have something to put your okra on when you're finished frying. A pan rack like this on top of a pan sheet, um, a sheet pan, excuse me, is, is a great way of doing this. Also, you can use paper towels if you don't have pan racks. So, so make sure you have something to raise it up, otherwise the okra will sweat and sit in the oil and then it will, will not be quite as pleasant. Here we go, folks. I've got it all in there frying, and when it comes out a beautiful golden brown color, then we know it is ready, okay? So just let it fry, and it'll tell you when it's done. That looks beautiful. Now, so you'll know, I am using peanut oil. I prefer to fry in peanut oil. I like the flavor that it gives. It's really beautiful. And um, once you've tried it, if you've never used it before, you'll be surprised. It does have a good flavor to it. Good aroma, good flavor, good oil. So that will make a nice accompaniment. As far as the quantity of everything that we've used today, now I'm using about 16 
medium size okra and that will this recipe will easily do that and more all right so it's a good way to go right here this will produce enough fried okra for two to three people easily now in addition we've also used milk here you can also use half and half if you choose and that's one cup of and to that we had four eggs there's a simple equation going on here to every egg which is considered to be a quarter of a cup you want to match it to a quarter of a cup of milk all right plain and simple i used one cup of cornmeal one cup of flour mixed with that cornmeal and one cup of flour separate for the pre-dusting before dusting my okra, of course, I seasoned it with salt and black pepper, and that is just a taste, folks. Just give it a nice coating and then go to frying. It's that easy. Let's take a look at the finished product. I'm looking forward to this okra. Well, I'm just now finishing getting my okra out of that oil. And if you'll notice, the color of the okra is all good and even. There is a couple of slightly darker spots on a few of them, just, you know, here, here. Very small things. But you'll notice in the end, even though I put some in a little earlier than others, it all comes out very even looking. So there you have it. That's fried okra. Not much to it, was there? And a beautiful, crispy, crunchy batter that definitely is easy and worth your time. Fried okra, just that simple. It's an easy recipe to do. Mm. Mm, delicious too. The sweetness of the okra when it's cooked at good temperature. Mm. The crunch of that batter, the spice we gave it, mm. it's all perfect. Folks, when you're doing your okra, do it this way. You're really gonna enjoy it. It makes a delicious okra. And you don't have to buy the junk in the freezer section, all right? <laughs> this is good. You're really gonna like it. And thank you for watching. Please look in the comments box um, and in the description box. You're gonna see some information there why I do two different kinds of uh, videos for every recipe. Also, you're gonna find some information there about where my website is, satrotter.com and Texas Cooking Today, of course, what you've been watching. To SHArter.com, that is where I sell my recipes. If you would, please take a look at that. And folks, please have you a good day. I'll see you on the next recipe. Bye-bye. I wanted to mention to you my recipes. Yes, I sell my recipes. Okay, look, some people they give the recipes out for free and they charge for the tutorial. So I do it the opposite on YouTube. You get the tutorial for free, I charge for the recipe. I did a lot of work, a lot of writing, a lot of extra stuff that goes with this, okay? Come over a little closer. Let me show you one of these up close so you really realize what you're getting. And then also, I'm offering one for free. We'll take a quick look at that right now. Come here. This is what I'm talking about right here. When I fill out a recipe, when I write one, I always bullet point all of the uh, ingredients, okay? A simple one or a complex one. I, in addition, number the instructions. And often I'll give pictures with it. Now, not all of them are this well done, but this is what I'm going for on every single one from here on out. All of my new recipes you're going to see done this way. And on the end of the recipe, there's always a place for notes for yourself, okay? Right now, go to my website. You're going to get this one right here for free, okay? Cinnamon rolls. Enjoy that cinnamon rolls recipe and take a look at the others I have. They're really worth your time.